All right, thanks for watching. And today, using the epsilon delta definition of a limit, I show that the limit as x goes to 1 of 1 over x is 1. And this is surprisingly tricky to prove. You, you'll see why. So what do I have to show? We have to show that for all, epsilon, there is a delta, delta positive, such that if um, x minus 1 is less than delta, where x is not equal to 1, then 1 over x minus 1 is less than epsilon. And as usual, you weirdly, you start with this and then try to fish out a delta from that. So, uh, step one, find delta. Okay. Well, for this, let's just uh, try to write out the difference, but then consider, as usual, the difference. So 1 over x minus 1, and that becomes... 1 minus x over x, and that is just absolute value of x minus 1 over absolute value of x. But remember, the numerator is good, because we can make this less than delta. We have complete control over this. So ideally what we want, we want to have control over this absolute value of x to make this less than epsilon. And now, before what we had, well, assume x is less than something, but here we actually want absolute value of x to be greater than something. So we want absolute value of x to be greater than blah. Why? Because then 1 over absolute value of x is less than 1 over blah, which goes the right way, because ideally then we want it to be less than epsilon. But then you might be like, okay, no problem. We'll just do the same thing we did for x squared and x cubed, which is to assume that x minus 1 is less than 1. Except this doesn't quite work, because here's why. Then we get, well, x minus 1 is between minus 1 and 1. And so x is between 0 and 2. But then, all that you can say is that um, 1 over x, well, all you can say is that 1 over x is bigger than 1 half and less than infinity. Because again, if x is between 0 and 2, then 1 over x, well, it's bigger than 1 half, but less than infinity, which doesn't really help. We ideally want 1 over x to be less than some fixed constant. Okay. Now, no problem. Well, remember, we can let x to be as close to 1 as we want. So in particular, choose 1 half. And I'll explain why you choose 1 half in a second. So assume... x minus 1 is less than 1 half. Then we'll see we get something slightly better. Then we get that x minus 1 is between minus 1 half and 1 half. So x is less than 1 plus 1 half, but also greater than 1 minus 1 half. So x is between 3 halves and 1 half. In particular, absolute value of x is bigger than 1 half. Because x is positive here, so absolute value of x is bigger than 1 half. And that's great, because this, imp this implies 1 over absolute value of x is less than 2. Okay. So, uh, here's the idea. What is happening? So, we have 1 over x, and let's say this is 1. And we said, well, um, assume that x is at most one half away from 1. Okay? And this is 0, and then therefore x is between 1 half and 3 halves. And in particular, 1 over x is at most, one, it's at most 2. So if x is between 1 half and 3 halves, 1 over x 
is at most two, and that's what we want. We want one over x to be small. On the other hand, if you did it before with the other way, this is one, zero, and two maybe, then one over x, well, it's not smaller than any possible number because it goes to infinity. Now, just a quick word about the choice of one half. Well, basically any number strictly between uh, 0 and 1 would have worked. So you see, we 1 didn't work because we would uh, go to 0 in that way, but any number between, one and, uh, between 0 and 1 works, for instance, 1 half. So in general, if you want a general strategy, if you want to prove that the limit as x goes to a of 1 over x is 1 over a, then choose if you want, um, well, a over 2, except sometimes a could be negative, so just choose absolute value of a over 2. So that's the sure way of doing this, if you'd like. All right, and now going back to the proof, so then this is, again, very good. Because then what do we get? We get, remember, 1 over x minus 1, that was x minus 1 over absolute value of x, but then that shows 1 over absolute value of x times absolute value of x minus 1. But now remember this is less than 2. So therefore what we get, this is less than 2 times x minus 1, or at least less than or equal to 2. And remember, we want this to be less than epsilon, so we set that to be less than epsilon, and in particular, x minus 1 is less than epsilon over 2. So that gives us our choice for delta, but remember we also had this other assumption where x is at most one half away from 1. So now let's do our proof. Step 2. So let epsilon be given. And let delta, again, not epsilon over 2, not 1 half. And by the way, where did this 1 half come from? Because we assumed x minus 2, x minus 1, sorry, was less than 1 half. But you want to choose the smaller one of that 2, just to guarantee that both things happen. So this is the minimum of those things. Then, if x minus 1 is less than delta and x is not equal to 1, then on the one hand, x minus 1 is less than 1 half, which I like to remind you gave us that x is between 1 half and 3 halves. So, in particular, 1 over x, or in, mm, therefore, 1 over x was less than 2. Okay. And in particular, this is also true for the absolute value, because here, uh, if x is between 1 half and 3 halves, we get 1 over absolute value of x is uh, less than 2. All right, and that's very good, because then... And moreover, remember, because x minus 1 is less than delta, x minus 1 is less than epsilon over 2. And then, if you do 1 over x minus 1, that becomes, as before, x minus 1 over x. And that is 1 over x times x minus 1. And that becomes less than 2 times x minus 1. And now, by definition of, uh, uh, by this equality, we get this is less than 2 times epsilon over 2, and we get our exciting grand finale that this is epsilon. And therefore, the limit as x goes to 1 of 1 over x is 1, and uh, we can stay home very happy. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.